We're bringing on Asir Yakub, a Brooklyn-based comedian and writer who just released her first comedy album, Denied Entry, with Comedy Records. Thank you so much for coming. Tell us your connection, what your connection is to Palestine, and just to start off. So I was born in Alabama, and I moved to Palestine when I was six months, and I lived there in Ramallah, uh, the West Bank, um, on and off until high school, and then moved back to the States Um and now I just go back and visit, you know, every year, every couple of years. I still have a lot of family there, um, mostly in the West Bank. And where's your family from? They're from a village outside of Ramallah. So I, I am in touch uh, with my family there, cousins. Um, one of them actually works for Mondo Weiss and is a, the correspondent there. Oh, nice. Um, so uh, shout out Mariam Bahuti. Follow her also for news. On oh, the that's your cousin? Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Um, and it's been, yeah, I mean, I talked to my aunt, the thing, I talked to my sister-in-law whose family, um, is there and she said, uh, a family, uh, in the West bank near her village got killed. The Israelis just shot at them while they were just crossing over. Um, I was there last summer and there was, uh, a new, there, a checkpoint that had been built around my village. Um, and then they shut it down and they, um, uh, closed us off. And so we weren't able to, my parents have a house there. We weren't able to get through. We had to kind of go around through a different village because Israel has just decided to close it off and punish us, as they said. Um, and there's always tensions. And this is, a, you know, people keep saying like, of course, like the Hamas argument, the Gaza thing. But to, even if you remove that every single day, there are still kids and innocent civilians being killed in the West Bank. Um, they're still being detained. Still um, the you know, the occupation has not stopped um, and uh, it's not under Hamas rule. So that argument right. has just completely, I, it's just so frustrating having to um, take away from the fact that there is still an occupation. This has been going on. We have been under siege, even in the West Bank. Um, and uh, just because you see it more intensely in Gaza and especially in this time, um, people not realizing that we see this every day on the news and we're, we're our, our news sources that actually um, tell us what's going on. So at least everybody else is starting to talk about it, but it's just um, unfortunate the the media that they're consuming and how biased it is. So it feels like a double edged sword on one hand. Okay. People are finally talking about it and asking questions. And then you, and then you see like the mainstream news and it's just absolutely abhorrent what has it been like for you like performing i mean are do you how much can you even talk about this stuff well i'm talking about it i'm like uh, i i don't know i have nothing to lose at this point i don't care i i can't when people's lives are at stake i'm not going to be censored uh, more than social media is already censoring me um the stage why i do comedy it was supposed to be a space to be liberated to use my voice to express myself fully and if I can't do that, then I don't want to do it. I don't want to do comedy. It's a luxury for me. It's something that, um, you know, I, I, I can't, um, I can't just shut my mouth and be in an industry that's complicit to genocide. If I can't talk about it. Um, I know I've, I've been harassed by, uh, uh, I know this one booker has been harassing people, um, Jewish people and Palestinians and Arabs who are, um, speaking out against Israeli violence. Um, uh, I'm sure there's places that won't want to work with me. That's happened in the past, like for being Palestinian. So I try to lay my cards out on the table. Like this is who I am. And honestly, I don't want to work with someone who is complicit in genocide anyway. Um, I've been trying to be selective about the type of shows that I'm doing too. Um, uh, you know, just doing a lot of kind of like POC shows and like, um, Palestine fundraiser here and there and like stuff like that because um, I'm also not feeling the funniest space <laughs> but right. um but also this is an outlet you know I made a sketch of it like a what call 1-800 but Hamas sketch to get you a kind of a uh carte blanche to do whatever the hell you want um sketch which has been received well and gotten a lot of hate but that's you know you're gonna is that to blame somebody. Hamas save your ass that one yeah <laughs> oh yeah we, we let's let's watch that one can we play that one part of getting blamed for things that you've done want to remain the victim while still inflicting harm what you need is but Hamas insurance lied on your taxes but Hamas cheated on your spouse but Hamas committing genocide 
Call 1-800-BAHAMAS today and get 100% off the hook. That's 1-800-BAHAMAS. Offer valid in the United States, Israel, Britain, and anywhere colonialism is accepted. I was just so angry. I was like, I don't know what to do, but without, you know, you know, you have to use satire and be yeah. funny. And even though I'm like grinning through it, I'm like, I'm so fucking angry, but yeah. you know, what are you going to do? Um, it's also really frustrating that Palestinians don't have the space to be angry, you know, and a lot of, because then it's like, Oh, there goes the violent one. What are you going to do? And it's like, yeah, I have the right to not only be angry, but I think people are not processing. Like Ali was saying, nobody's processing right now. It's impossible. It's like a grief every second, every minute. How can you, a new one. And it's impossible for your brain to even wrap its head around it and it shouldn't have to. So it's been just, um, really tough, but I know I'm going out I'm using my voice. I'm doing podcasts like this that support and amplify Palestinian voices. Um, as much as social media it sickens me, I'm, uh, I'm still out there. I'm trying to share things because it's still trying to suppress us. Um, definitely the censorship has been overwhelming with Instagram and all of these places. So, um, but we, all we have is our voices and we, you know, we, I, I can't look away and, yeah. you know, I've lived through a bombing in Ramallah. I've survived in 2000. So I, and on a, and I've lived through after that, it was one of the first bombings that happened in the West bank. And then it was every night for a year. Um, then my family moved back. But every every night, I remember going to bed next to my mom on the floor away from the windows and thinking, yeah, I might not wake up the next day. Not that casual about it, but just like, it's just you accept it as a fact of life. And for me, like watching these videos have been, uh, Gaza has been so, like even on a personal level, so re-traumatizing. Um, I can't even imagine even a fraction of what they're going through. So it's... I feel it in my bones. I feel it takes me right back. And it, it I, I can't even, I would not wish this, no one, no one should have to know this kind of terror. I don't think people, when they hear Hamas is terror, I don't think people understand what terror is, what actual terror that like, like radiates through every fiber of your being where like, I don't think most people understand that and overuse that word and don't yeah. understand like it's, it takes over you and it's, it's something you do, you don't recover from. I, I'm lucky I have, I live in New York. I have a therapist, but like God, these kids will like, so I can't even imagine the amount, the amount of trauma that even people who survive are going to go through. I've been reading, um, cause I'm trying to understand that psyche as well. It's like, well, Hamas is holding out on them. Hamas has all the fuel. Hamas is stealing all the, right. Work. Okay. Yeah. Again, even if you remove that, it's e it's so easy to just demonize a whole group population. But what about the West Bank for the last seven right, five exactly. years? What about mm -hmm. they control a lot of the resources? Like my parents can't add anything, build anything to their house. They have to get permission to do anything to their house. They have to get permission if they want to sell. They have to permit for the water lines for everything. That's not. I'm not talking about in Gaza. I, I talk, you know, right. Gaza was a maximum security prison. Like the West Bank is still a, a prison. It's just slightly uh, more open prison. Right. Better condition. Slightly better. Better condition. conditions, but you can't. Yeah, you can't travel as freely. You can't. You know, there's still checkpoints, settlements everywhere. Um, you know. They, soldier can shoot you with complete impunity doesn't matter right and have like we all watched it they you know first denied we were talking about shireen they denied it an american citizen right. exactly. who is christian because they like to also demonize muslims on top right. of that and nothing's happened and right even yeah, being best, an Amer yeah. even being palestinian american she still couldn't get justice like you they still couldn't condemn it they lied at like the west you know america couldn't condemn it at, they, they wouldn't meet with her family Anything else that you want to um, share about what you're working on? Yeah, if uh, just follow me for, um, you know, the shows, I'll be reposting some stuff. Um, be doing a show called Muslim Girls DTF as part of New York Comedy Festival. Not political, but we'll probably get there. Um, Which I'm is sure I'll get like, debate their faith. Uh, discuss their, their faith. Discuss their faith. Yeah. It's just a little. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that's going to be November 4th at City Winery Loft. Um, oh, nice. if anyone wants to come out and support and, you know, just, um, support your, you know, fellow Palestinians and prop up our voices, repost our stuff because it's not getting shared or views, um, because of censorship and restrictions online, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, have you, yeah. you've experienced that? 
Oh yeah, I've had post. I had that three lies that Israel tell got yeah. exposed. Uh, I mean, sorry, taken down. Um, I think I know who who did it. Uh, it's just I think this person who's been after all these comedians, like who've been um, speaking out. Um, but literally, the posts were from the Israeli papers saying and reporters saying that it wasn't confirmed. Right. So it wasn't like it was this propaganda. Right. Where, that's so. Anyway, it's absolutely insane. Um, but yeah, just uh, and read these other um, outlets too, like Mondo Ice, Electronic, and Tafada. I think it really helps to get a um, a better, more balanced perspective. And what is this Booker? So this is a Booker you're saying who's harassing people. Like, what is the Booker doing? Um, just like messaging people nasty stuff. I'm sure also like people aren't gonna get you know booked on shows. Like, who cares? But what? I mean, it sucks. But also. Um, not surprising. Uh, just uh, reposting my stuff, but not actually um, and writing nasty things on it and then attacking people in the comments, harassing comedians. Like, is that it's a lot of like Jewish comedians and I mean, they're not as, you know, who have been speaking out against it. So it's not just us or like Arabs or Palestinians, um, just anybody. Um, but you have to really ask yourself, what are you hiding? Like, why do you if, right. if we're like all about just trying to expose the truth and the same thing happened in any movement, even in the Me Too movement, women who were getting, um, you know, um, uh, harassed and, and penalized and all these horrible things were happening to them for speaking out. And then eventually something bubbles up to the right. surface and blows over, you know, maybe that's not the best choice of words, but, <laughs> yeah, yeah. but um, eventually the truth will come out.